Greetings folks, this video is going to be the first in a series of iNav troubleshooting videos and in this video I'm going to be talking about possible reasons the board won't arm or you can't spin the motor up. Now there are lots of components connected here, we have the motor ESC, receiver, GPS, servo, all of these things can contribute to the problem, to uh, disabling arming or preventing the motor from spinning up. Also the model mix in the radio as well. So let's step through some of the problems. First off we have to make sure that the motor and ESC are actually working and to do that I would test it independently. Disconnect that there. I would get a uh, external receiver uh, or a servo tester. Convince yourself that the ESC and motor are actually functional. So let's try it I have a serial Express LRS receiver connected to the board, but I have a PWM uh, receiver here that I can test with. Um, so let's connect up the motor. And there we go. That proves that the ESC in the motor and all the wiring is intact and is going to work. That's the starting point. Now the next logical troubleshooting step is to make sure that the board is communicating with the ESC and uh, the range of PWM values produced by the board are matched by the ESC. So let's plug the uh, ESC into the board and we could do all of this through the configurator. We don't need radio, receiver, GPS connected or anything like that. This sort of bar bypasses all of that stuff. So ESC plugging into S1 on the board. The first set of pins are at S bus. We want the second set of pins. I've removed the five volt line from the ESC because we don't need five volts being fed into the board. It has its own five volt voltage regulator. So plugging the ESC into the S1 pins and we'll connect up the configurator. And we'll connect the battery as well. Now have a quick look at the mixer page and if you'd followed the normal prompts setting up your board and you're using an aeroplane not a glider mix then you will have motor connected to S1 pins. There's the motor mixer line there. Uh, you can see on the little diagram we've got S1 for motor there uh, and you can also see if we add a second motor Motor 2 connected to S2, little diagram says S1 and S2, but we've actually only got one motor, so we'll stick with that. Now if we go to the outputs page, there's this tick item here, enable motor and servo output. Now if you don't have that turned on, then the motor and servos are not going to work. So remember to tick that in the outputs page. And you can see in this motor tab here, uh, you can tick this little warning box here. Uh, remove your propellers because this will be spinning up the motor uh, on the bench. Tick that and then we have access to uh, a motor slider here. My motor is working nicely. Uh, so yeah, that's just a way of checking whether the board is communicating with the ESC. Now if the ESC is making all these horrible beeps all the time while you, when you first connect it up, that means you need to calibrate your ESC using the configurator. And we'll do that now, so unplug the battery, put the motor slider up to full, connect the battery, wait for those two beeps, pull the slider down to zero, and that tells you that the ESC is now calibrated to the range of PWM values coming from the board. And just to check, yes, that is working. Now, if you can't run up your motor using that method, then you would have to check the quality of your soldering on these pins to make sure there aren't any bridged pins. And also make sure you flash the board with the correct firmware. Uh, don't just assume you know what the firmware target is. Have a look at the manufacturer's website to make sure you're actually using the, the correct firmware. Now the next thing to check is that the receiver and the radio are talking to each other. They are bound properly and connected to the board properly. I can see I have signal bars on the screen there so I know that they are bound and talking to each other. 
receiver is connected to UART1 on this board and uh, we are getting power from the board so that's all good the only thing that may be a problem are that we have the RX and the TX cables the wrong way around we'll go over and have a look at the configurator and uh, have a look at the receiver page to work out those sorts of things and we also have to have the INAV mix in the radio you can't use any other sort of mix it has to be the INAV mix if you for example are flying a uh, flying wing and you're using a delta mix let's have a look at that which is like a 50 50 elevon mix that is wrong for INAV you can't use that to operate an INAV model you must have a dedicated INAV mix which looks like this it is just the basic aileron elevator throttle rudder 100% no trims no expo no, nothing else like that on the first four channels so let's go over to the configurator and we'll connect up the board check out the receiver page to make sure all our bars are moving in the, in the correct direction now I'm over on the INAV configurator receiver page and the receiver is powered up and if I move the sticks on the radio up and to the right all the graphs go to the right that's what you want to see if for example you only get roll pitch and you're going to the right and not throttle that means you've got a throttle cut switch on somewhere that uh, you've left over from another build you shouldn't have a throttle cut switch you should use the arming switch to uh, make the throttle safe now if we look down the bottom of the INAV configurator page here we've got a little thing that says arming flags and if all is working well then you'll arm the board and you'll see armed comes up, comes up here I'll disarm now now if I pull the receiver out it will say arming is disabled because of the RC link that's one clue as to what might be the problem now we can look at GPS plug the GPS in and we've got power uh, this GPS gets power through the USB connection to the computer some boards you will have to plug the battery in to power up the GPS the thing with this, the GPS is if it's configured in INAV and connected to the board then you won't be able to arm the board until you get six satellites and a 3D lock so that will stop you from being able to spin the motor up if you're sitting inside on the bench and you don't have satellites acquired so let's have a look at the configurator now at the moment I have the GPS disabled for the troubleshooting purposes now if you do disable the GPS so that you can arm it without satellites you also have to go to failsafe and make sure that return to home isn't selected here as the failsafe condition that will prevent arming so change it to do nothing if you are disabling the GPS but we're now going to enable the GPS so let's go to the GPS click GPS for navigation and telemetry make sure the serial port that the GPS is connected to is listed here so that's UART 3 let's go to the ports UART 3 there's the GPS selected there I need to just save and reboot that so that the little blue icon shows up here shows that the GPS is working and we can see numbers ticking over here so we know that it's all working just waiting to acquire enough satellites to give us a 3d lock now with the gps selected and working you can have some nav modes like cruise loiter and return to home and it's important to know that you can't arm with any of these nav modes selected you must have them all disabled and you can only arm in acro angle or manual mode now one final thing that has caused problems for some people is the calibration of your radio sticks if you have recently updated your firmware you may need to redo your stick calibration so go to the hardware page in OpenTX or Edge TX and click the calibration and then follow all the prompts to set the limits for all your sticks and knobs and things like that and that can possibly prevent arming if the, the throttle doesn't go down far enough so a final recap make sure your ESC and motor actually work by testing them independently make sure your radio and receiver are talking to each other make sure the board is actually sending a signal to the ESC wait for at least six satellites in a 3D lock on your GPS before you can arm make sure there are no 
nav modes selected while you're trying to arm and uh, make sure you have the correct firmware loaded onto your board. Other than that, it's only going to be damaged components on your board or bad soldering, uh, something like that. So good luck. Hopefully that helps solve your motor problem and uh, happy iNaving. See you in the next video.